Welcome, I'm Poseidon, and this is Pantheon Talks. One of the biggest issues I find when I talk to other creators is many feel there is a lack of information to help them with their particular problem, or they feel overwhelmed and don't know where to start because the task can feel extremely daunting. In this video, we have selected resources to help with beginning or improving your webtoons. Let us begin. Our first article is titled, Making a Comic for Webtoon, Where to Start? It is found on IsabelArn.com. This article was written in 2019. It is a walkthrough from Isabel Arn, the creator of a series called Radiant. This article is extremely useful for new webcomic creators or those who are interested but haven't committed to making a series yet. At the beginning of the article, Isabel breaks down what Webtoon is, how it works, and why she likes the Webtoon format. In the article, she tackles some interesting questions, such as how to start a comic. Of course, this is a broad question, which can have many different answers. However, she specifically focuses on her personal journey as she developed Radiant. She breaks down how her webtoon was sparked by multiple dreams she had and how she formed those dreams into a story. She goes on to give specific tips about how and why she crafted the beginning and ending first, developing her characters to a point of knowing how they would react in specific situations. This was key to making her story, and this process helped her to cut or change scenes. A key point from this article is doing preparation before starting the series. This article is one of many. She has additional articles posted on her website. Article number two is called Tips for Creating Vertical Scrolling Webtoons from Clip Studio's website. The article opens by saying, What are the special features of comics meant to be read by scrolling on a smartphone? Have you thought about drawing comics, but would like to do so in a less strict style as compared to the traditional manga or comic format? Check out this article to learn more. In this article, I enjoyed the fact that it broke down what webtoons are and mentioned more notable professional webtoon services, such as webtoon.com, tapas.io, lesson.com, and Toonmix, and a few websites that individual or amateur artists are free to post their stories on, such as Webtoon, Comico, and Tapas. It goes into detail on why webtoons uses the vertical format and how it can be beneficial to the readers which I think is great for any comic creator to understand if they are getting into the webtoon space. The article explains, The placement of characters and dialogue is deliberately spaced. The space between panels is used for dramatic effect, composition and style, color, and creating a vertical document. And it ties in how Clip Studio has a number of features that assist with making a webtoon much easier, such as webtoon presets, viewable area for smartphones, splitting and exporting, multiple windows to display the same canvas, save frequently used colors in a color set, add moods and dramatic effects with adjustment layers, and using materials or Clip Studio assets. There is a lot of information and examples on how to make our webcomic making process much easier. I would definitely say check this one out. The third article is called Basic Tools for Beginners and Creating the Canvas Size by S. Morishita. This is another way to make a webtoon using Clip Studio, but from a creator's perspective. S. Morishita, who has made multiple series, School Memories, Love, Love, Fighting, and Catch Me, Fight Me, Love Me. The style of this article really eases new creators into what would be an extremely overwhelming process. The article goes on to focus on five tools and programs like Clip Studio Paint that she uses to create her comic. One, pencil tool, mechanical pencil doodling the rough draft of my webtoon. Two, ink pen, the G pen is my go-to default to use for inking and coloring. Three, panel layer, for making the comic boxes around my art. Four, text tool, adding the speech because I don't want to draw the dialogue by hand. And five, word balloons. I get too hyper-focused on making the word balloon circles perfect, so I just use the pre-made ones. And she does mention, if you don't have Clip Studio Paint, no worries, because Krita, Metabang Paint, and Ibis Paint also have the same or similar tools, and these programs are also free. So if you use any of these other programs, this guy can be helpful to you as well. But this isn't the only useful information she tackles in this article. She also elaborates on her webtoon format size and why she uses 1600 pixels wide and 4800 pixels high and usually sticks to just drawing two or three panels per file. This creator provides a lot of information to help webtoon creators. She has a YouTube and Patreon with additional information on how to improve as a creator. I suggest checking out her additional content. Article number four is 
growing influence on webtoons and why people should read them. What's interesting about this article is the power that webtoons and similar companies are gaining and how the comic industry and market is being affected. Webtoons are being adapted to Netflix series more and more as time passes. The article even goes on to break down the influence the word webtoon is playing in the West. A graph found in the article shows the Google Trend statistics on the word webtoon in the U.S. Interest in webtoons is clearly rising. According to a study done by these lovely people, whose names I don't feel like butchering, Lezen Comics, a Korean webtoon platform, was reported to be ranked among the highest grossing mobile applications on U.S. Google Play in the first quarter of 2018, outpacing Marvel and DC Comics. Lezen Comics is not the only one making money, though. Webtoon, another webtoon platform, pulls in a lot of revenue as well. Seeing articles like this really highlights the impact of not only Webtoons, the company, but how making a Webtoon now is a good investment, especially for creators who are on the fence about pursuing such a difficult endeavor. The fifth article is about understanding Webtoon typesetting. This article I found to be one of the most useful. It emphasizes the importance of how to use font, speech bubbles, thought bubbles, shock bubbles, monologues, journal entries, notes, and SFX. It is a technical elaboration on how to use these correctly or more efficient. It is an interesting insight into the things that are considered revolving around text. And although all of this does not directly apply to making our webtoon, it's still an interesting read that adds a wider perspective for comic creators to consider when creating the text in our comics. Article number six, This last resource we are suggesting is found on Webtoons, and it's from a former Canvas creator, Art Crumbs. This series is called How to Make Comics, and here is the summary, an in-depth tutorial series that covers topics for new and advanced creators alike. Learn everything from planning to drawing to scanning and editing and printing. This series goes above and beyond, breaking down some of the common comic lingo that new creators will likely be unfamiliar with while expanding on that information to help creators with the webcomic process. And almost every topic has accommodating illustrations and examples to help walk us through the point our crumbs is trying to make. Speaking of the explanation, it goes over the basics while leaving room for creators to experiment and be creative with the comic making process. Most of the information is from 2018. However, each of those episodes provides useful information that can assist individuals with the current comic-making process. In the 2020 episodes, Art Crom offers some useful information that applies to current applications of webtoons and webcomics. This creator is also a YouTuber with a lot of interesting and beneficial content, so be sure to check them out. Their information, along with all the articles mentioned in the video, will have links in the description. This is just a handful of the many awesome articles that are out there to help assist us with improving our comics. So, if you're ever struggling with a topic, make sure to do a little research on the problem you're having before giving up. As we saw, many of the articles are from fellow creators in the Webtoon world, so never feel shy about asking someone for help. I hope these resources are useful and give you something to help either improve or jumpstart your Webtoon journey. Now, I want to hear from you. What resources have you found useful in your Webtoon journey? From the start of your Webtoon making process to now, how have you improved? Who or what inspired you to make a Webtoon? And tell us why. I'm looking forward to reading your experiences in the comments. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was useful to you or at the very least insightful. Please subscribe. Leave the video a like and ring the bell for more content like this. A huge thank you and shout out to our patrons. If you would like to support us while getting some extra content we don't post on Instagram or YouTube, head over and follow us on Patreon. I'll catch you in our next video.